Hello everyone, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is September 5th, 2020, and this is part 29 of my Mystery of the Beast series. This one is called In a Single Hour. If you all have not yet heard of Dana Coverstone, you need to listen to his uh, four videos that he's done. The Lord has been giving Dana dreams for almost a year now, beginning back in December of 2019, that are prophetic dreams. And they are very compelling dreams. When I heard him for the first time uh, a little over a week ago, I was immediately stirred that there was truth in what he was saying. The dream seemed so apocalyptic, so um, dark, that at first listen, you're tempted not to receive it. You know, most of us are programmed to the good life. Um, we've had things good and easy for so long, especially here in America, that it's hard to hear a word that is this forceful and this compelling about what we are about to go through. But the amazing thing to remember and the amazing thing to think about is that what is coming is not for the faithful. What is coming is not to hurt God's people who are sincerely trying to obey him and walk in his ways. Dana was given very strong prophetic dreams about what was soon to take place in the United States beginning in December of 2019. At that time, since it was new to him, he did not even record he did not even make a video of the dream that he had. He tells us that he shared it with some of the uh, leaders of his church. He's a pastor of a uh, Assembly of God church in Kentucky. What he saw in December of 2019 was what we have seen since March of 2020 with respect to the COVID-19 pandemic and then also relating to the riots that we saw shortly after the pandemic. He saw very clear images of things that would take place because of the COVID-19 and also of the, of the riots that would begin. And that began in June of 2019 and have not ceased even today. Then around June or so, Dana received some more dreams. And in the last couple of weeks, he's received more dreams and has released a couple of new videos. And the videos are, they're very distressing from the natural viewpoint because they show the chaos that is coming to the United States of America. It's hard for us as Americans to realize that this could happen to us, but it is. If you lived in Portland, if you lived in Seattle, if you lived in Kenosha, then you would understand a lot better the chaos that is occurring in those cities. Now, I've told you in previous videos that we are entering the day of wrath, that the storm of the Lord that Donald Trump spoke of in 2017, well, he spoke, he said, this is the calm before the storm. That storm is the storm of the Lord. I believe he was speaking prophetically. He probably didn't quite understand the fullness of what he was saying. But I think he understands a lot more than 
what we think he understands and what we give him credit for. The storm of the Lord is the day of wrath. It's the day of the Lord. It's the battle of Armageddon. There are various words in the scripture that deal with the time that we're coming into. And literally, we are there now. It's going to get worse over the next months. And what Dana has seen are prophetic visions in dreams that give us a glimpse of what it's going to look like. What I want to do now is to take you to the scripture to show you in the scripture what it looks like. Because the scripture, in fact, prophesies what we are coming into. Remember, I have taught you that Donald Trump is the eighth head of the beast and that Donald Trump is the one commissioned by God to destroy Babylon the Great. We see this in Revelation chapter 17. In Revelation 17, you're introduced to the eighth head of the beast. And at the very end of that chapter, concerning this eighth head, here's what the angel says to John. The waters that you saw where the prostitute is seated are peoples and multitudes and nations and languages. And the ten horns that you saw, they and the beast will hate the prostitute. The ten horns are the kings of the earth who give allegiance to the beast. They are the kings of the earth who have already told Donald Trump that they support what he's doing in destroying the deep state, that they support what he's doing in destroying Babylon the Great. They don't call it Babylon the Great. You don't hear anyone call it Babylon the Great. You, you hear it called the deep state or the cabal. That is Babylon the Great. The ten horns are not ten specific men or presidents or kings of nations. They are all of the kings and the nations that are supporting Donald Trump. So it is a full number. It's a number of fullness that's dealing with all of the kings of the earth who have given their allegiance to Donald Trump to bring down this satanic evil that has been controlling our lives forever, forever. That's why it's been so difficult on us. And that's prophesied in Daniel chapter seven, that, that the evil would totally destroy the power of the holy people. And that did in fact happen because the holy people have no power. And the 10 horns that you saw, they and the beast will hate the prostitute they will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her up with fire. Now, isn't it interesting that Babylon the Great is being destroyed by fire even now? They set fire to themselves. Well, that's exactly what God did with the Assyrians when they came to attack Judah and Jerusalem at the time of Hezekiah. He set them against themselves and they destroyed each other and therefore they could not attack. God's city. They could not attack God's king. Right now, God has set the evil ones against each other. For God has put it into their hearts. Okay, Their hearts are the beast and the ten horns. God has put it into their hearts to carry out his purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. So they are of one mind with the beast, and they give their royal power to the beast, and they are going to destroy Babylon the Great. And the woman that you saw is the great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. The great city. The great city goes by many names. The great city goes by the name of Jerusalem. Old Jerusalem. The great city goes by the name of New York, Chicago, London, Paris. The great city 
Wuhan, the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. After this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having authority. And the earth was made bright with his glory, and he called out with a mighty voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place for demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable beast. For all nations have drunk the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality, and the kings of the earth have committed immorality with her, and the merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of her luxurious living. You know, we really don't understand how great the wealth of Babylon is or was. There are so many very rich people, rich beyond our ability to even conceive of it. Men who own islands, men who own multi-million dollar yachts, men who own multiple homes worth millions and millions of dollars. Men who spend $10,000 or $20,000 to buy a child for their sexual pleasure. Men who then torture and kill these children in order to drink their adrenochrome and eat their flesh. Cannibals. This has all come to light since Donald Trump became president. None of us knew. None of us knew. Which of you ever thought that people were drinking adrenochrome, drinking blood that had been adrenalized because of torture? Who knew that? I had never heard of it. I thought I understood the evil of Satan. I had no clue. I had no clue. Who knew that 800,000 children are missing every year in the United States alone? and sold into sexual slavery, and terrorized with satanic sacrifice, ritual abuse. What is spirit cooking? What is spirit cooking? Look it up. Marina Abramovich and her spirit cooking. Tied in with the cabal. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins and lest you share in her plagues. Can you believe that there are God's people who are part of the gross sin of Babylon the Great? Oh, yes. Many, many. And that's one of the strong points in Dana Coverstone's prophetic dreams is that God is going to now judge his people that do not come out, have not come out, have not repented of their sins. For her sins, the sins of Babylon the Great are heaped high as heaven and God has remembered her iniquities. Pay her back as she herself has paid back others and repay her double for her deeds. Mix a double portion for her in the cup she mixed. As she glorified herself and lived in luxury, so give her a like measure of torment and mourning. Since in her heart she says, I sit as a queen. I am no widow and mourning I shall never see. Since in her heart she says, I sit as a queen. I am no widow and mourning I shall never see. Have you seen that before? That should ring a bell with you. You should, you should think, I've heard that before. Yes, you have heard it before. And I'll tell you where you heard it. You heard it in Isaiah chapter 47. Isaiah 47, and I have so many of the chapters open here because all of these chapters in Isaiah 40, the 40s, are dealing with the times that we live in now. 
Isaiah 47 begins like this. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. We're talking about Babylon the Great, remember, in Revelation 17 and 18. Sit on the ground without a throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind flour. Put off your veil. Strip off your robe. Uncover your legs. Pass through the rivers. Your nakedness shall be uncovered and your disgrace shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will spare no one. Our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, is his name, is the Holy One of Israel. Who is Israel? Israel is God's elect. I am Israel. Are you? I am Israel. Sit in silence and go into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no more be called the mistress of kingdoms, the mistress of kingdoms, the one who ruled the world, Babylon the Great. I was angry with my people. I profaned my heritage. I gave them into your hand. You showed them no mercy. On the aged you made your yoke exceedingly heavy. I was angry with my people. I profaned my own heritage. I gave them into your hand. See, we have been given into the hand of Babylon. We were given into the hand of Babylon because of our own sin. God's people have not obeyed his voice. Look at the church. Look at the church. Look at the sin, the hypocrisy in the church. It's amazing to me how many people have suddenly come out to speak against Dana Coverstone's prophecies. Why? Because he stirred them up. It, it, it's hard to take. What is happening is hard to take, but it's the fulfillment of prophecy. Babylon showed us no mercy. On the age, you made your yoke exceedingly heavy. How many people have gone into Walmart and seen the old people working, working, working until they can work no more? I have a client now, 90 years old, whose wife had cancer and yet worked in Walmart until about a year before she died of her cancer at age 88. So she worked until at least age 87. People have not had enough when they're old in this culture of ours because the yoke of Babylon was heavy upon them, especially upon the aged. You said... I shall be mistress forever so that you did not lay these things to heart or remember their end. You said I shall be mistress forever. Now go back to Revelation chapter 18 verse 7. As she glorified herself and lived in luxury, so give her a like measure of torment and mourning. Since in her heart she says, I sit as a queen. I am no widow and mourning I shall never see. Back to Isaiah. 47. Now, therefore, hear this, you lover of pleasures, who sit securely and say, who say in your heart, I am, and there is no one besides me. I shall not sit as a widow or know the loss of children. These two things shall come to you in a moment. In one day, the loss of children and widowhood shall come upon you in full measure in spite of your many sorceries and the great power of your enchantments. Yes, God acknowledges she works by sorcery. She works by enchantment. She serves Satan. She's full of witches and wizards, warlocks, and those who call upon the dead, those who channel familiar spirits. Now, going back to Revelation 18, look at this, verse 8. For this reason, her plagues will come in a single day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be burned up with fire, for mighty is the Lord God who has judged her. 
Dana Coverstone sees incredible pictures of fire in this country. He sees Washington burning. Washington burning. Washington, D.C. burning. He sees cities on fire. Let's go back to Isaiah. You felt secure in your wickedness. You said no one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge led you astray. And you said in your heart, I am. And there is no one besides me. Who is I am? Jesus, our God, is the great I am. There is no one besides him. But evil shall come upon you, which you will not know how to charm away. Disaster shall fall upon you, for which you will not be able to atone. And ruin shall come upon you suddenly, of which you know nothing. Stand fast in your enchantments and your many sorceries with which you have labored from your youth. Perhaps you may be able to succeed. Perhaps you may inspire terror. You are wearied with your many counsels. Let them stand forth and save you. Those who divide the heavens, who gaze at the stars, who at the new moons make known what shall come upon you. Behold, they are like stubble. The fire consumes them. They cannot deliver themselves from the power of the flame. No coal for warm, warming oneself is this. No fire to sit before. Such to you are those with whom you have labored and have done business with from your youth. They wander about, each in his own direction. There is no one to save you. There is no one to save you, Babylon. Now back to Revelation chapter 18. Verse 9. And the kings of the earth who committed sexual immorality and lived in luxury with her, will weep and wail over her when they see the smoke of her burning. They will stand far off in fear of her torment and say, Alas, alas, you great city, you mighty city, Babylon, for in a single hour your judgment has come. This is a short time frame. God is going to judge Babylon quickly. The process has already begun. In a single hour, your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth weep and mourn for her, since no one buys their cargo anymore. This is what we have to understand here. It's never going back to the way it was. In Dana Coverstone's latest dreams, he saw the market, the something dry index, at zero. There was no trade. No trade. There was no movement of ships. That's what this is talking. He saw it in a dream. He saw what Revelation chapter 18 prophesies. And the merchants of the earth weep and mourn for her since no one buys their cargo anymore. Cargo of gold, silver, jewels, pearls, fine linen, purple cloth, silk, scarlet cloth, all kinds of scented wood, all kinds of articles of ivory, all kinds of articles of costly wood. You know, we couldn't even afford these things, could we? We didn't have money for this, but they did. Bronze, iron, and marble. Marble. Cinnamon, spice, incense, myrrh, frankincense. Have you ever had real myrrh or real frankincense? Real cinnamon? Wine. What wine do you get to drink? The bottom of the barrel. You don't get the finest wine. You don't get the good wine. This is for the rich. Oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle, and sheep. Horses and chariots and slaves, that is, human souls. They trade in men. They trade in the lives of children. They trade in the lives of babies for human sacrifice, for human consumption, for anything that can be done with a person, with a child, with a soul. This is coming to an end. 
the fruit for which your soul longed has gone from you, and all your delicacies and your splendors are lost to you, never to be found again. The merchants of these wares who gained wealth from her will stand far off, in fear of her torment, weeping and mourning aloud. Alas, alas for the great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet, adorned with gold, with jewels and with pearls. Do you have any of that? For in a single hour, all this wealth has been laid waste. A single hour. That phrase occurs three times in this chapter. And all shipmasters and seafaring men, sailors and all whose trade is on the sea, stood far off and cried out as they saw the smoke of her burning. What city was like the great city, they say. And they threw dust on their heads as they wept and mourned, crying out, Alas, alas, the great city, where all who had ships at sea grew rich by her wealth. For in a single hour, she has been laid waste. Dana Coverstone saw pictures for telling this. This is the time we live in. This is the day of wrath. This is the day of the Lord. This is the day of judgment upon the wicked. The time has come. So many people, I find, they still cannot wrap their minds about it. They say, oh, no, we're not there yet. I mean, the rapture hasn't occurred. Well, you know, your theology might be wrong. Do you ever consider that? You may not have understood the scriptures correctly. Your teachers may not have known. Because people are looking for certain things, and they're not seeing them happen the way they thought. They thought they would be gone in the rapture by now. It hasn't happened. It's not going to happen the way that you think. So, once again, we have this destruction. For in a single hour, she has been laid waste. But then, look. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you, Kodeshim, and apostles and prophets. For God has given judgment for you against her. These prophecies by Dana Coverstone are a good thing. I began to look into these things dealing with the beast, the fulfillment of Scripture because prophets said that Donald Trump had been, had been raised up by God and had been anointed to do great things and that there would be great revival as a consequence. The revival has not yet occurred, but it will occur. And Donald Trump, he is the one who has brought to the forefront, brought to the people's view, the incredible wickedness that has ruled this world forever. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, So will Babylon the great city be thrown down with violence and will be found no more. And the sound of harpists and musicians, of flute players and trumpeters will be heard in you no more. And a craftsman of any craft will be found in you no more. And the sound of the mill will be heard in you no more. And the light of a lamp will shine in you no more. And the voice of bridegroom and bride will be heard in you no more. For your merchants were the great ones of the earth, and all nations were deceived by your sorcery, by your pharmacaea. Are you still beholden to the drugs of the doctors who enslave you to their false prognosis that can never heal you of your disease? Everyone has been deceived by Babylon the Great. And 
all, almost all, have taken the mark of the beast in order to buy and sell within that system so that they could become rich too. Were you one of them? Are you one of them? If you are, repent. Repent. Yes, even the mark of the beast can be repented of. You've heard otherwise, but those people were wrong. You can repent of taking the mark of the beast. Get on your knees and pray. Mourn, weep, wail, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The day of the Lord is here. The day of wrath is here. In her, verse 24 of Revelation 18, in her, in Babylon the Great, was found the blood of prophets and saints and of all who have been slain on the earth. Babylon the Great is the false satanic system that has ruled the world from the beginning and is responsible for killing everyone who has died at their hands. Everyone who has died violently because, or not even necessarily violently, but because of bad drugs, you know, the blood of all who have been wrongly killed are attributed to Babylon the Great. Now I want to further expound on something because we all need to learn to research the scripture and get a good reference Bible. The English Standard Version has an excellent reference uh, edition. And this verse 7 in chapter 18 takes you both to the what I read to you from Isaiah 47 and also to Zephaniah chapter 2. Now, it's tempting to read all of Zephaniah, but let's go to verse 15 of chapter 2. This is the exultant city. What city do you think he might be talking about? That lives securely, that said in her heart, I am, and there's no one else. What a desolation she has become. A lair for wild beasts. Everyone who passes by her hisses and shakes his fist. So Zephaniah prophesied this as well. And I'm not going to stop here, but the Lord just reminded me of something that I want to take you back to see. In Revelation chapter 18, when it talks about Babylon being thrown down, and it says that there will no longer be harpists, musicians, flute, craftsmen, mills, lamps, marriage. That's talking about in Babylon the Great. In God's kingdom, which is now coming, there will be all of these things. We won't have the riches that are described earlier, all the riches of gold and silver and pearls and and every other luxury that you can think of. But we will have enough. We will have food. We will have shelter. We will have homes. We will have tools. We will have musical instruments. We will have dancing. We will have parties. We will all be under our own vine and our fig tree. We will be able to drink wine. We will be able to eat good food. We will be able to marry our children to other children that are following the Lord. So those things will still occur, but in the kingdom of God, in a different context, in a holy context, in a righteous context. And now going back to Zephaniah. Remember, the chapter numbers are not in the original scriptures. So let's keep reading here. Verse 15 of chapter 2 talks about the exultant city, which is Babylon the Great. And then it continues. Woe to her who is rebellious and defiled, the oppressing city. See, it's still talking about Babylon the Great. She listens to no voice. She accepts no correction. She does not trust in the Lord. She does not draw near to her God. See, God is the God of all. 
Babylon the Great had a true God that they could have worshipped. Jesus Christ. But who did they worship? They worshipped Satan who wanted to, who opposed and wanted to take the place of God. Her officials within her are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves that leave nothing till the morning. Her prophets are fickle, treacherous men. Her priests profane what is holy. They do violence to the law. Babylon has its own priests. Most churches belong to Babylon the Great. But so do all the other false religions in the world. And so, so do all the false clubs. You know, all of the secret societies. They all have their own priests and they all profane what is holy. They do violence to the law. They do violence to the law of God. You see, to the law and to the testimony. If a person will not speak according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. God gave us his law and his testimony for a reason. Testimony, the word of witnesses, the word of men who knew God, the word of men to whom God poured in his spirit and gave his word. That's what's written in the Bible. To the law and to the testimony, you must speak according to that word. The Lord within her is righteous. He does no injustice. Every morning he shows forth his justice. God is all and in all. Within her, even within Babylon the Great, he was within Jerusalem and Jerusalem, old Jerusalem, was and is part of Babylon the Great. Every morning he shows forth his justice. Each dawn he does not fail, but the unjust knows no shame. I have cut off nations. Their battlements are in ruins. I have laid waste their streets so that no one walks in them. Their cities have been made desolate without a man, without an inhabitant. I said, surely you will fear me. You will accept correction. Then your dwelling would not be cut off according to all that I've appointed against you. But all the more they were eager to make all their deeds corrupt. What are the cities that are being destroyed now? They're the cities in which corruption was rampant. The cities who were run by the priests and prophets of Satan. The Democrat cities. But does that mean that the Republicans were not evil? No. No doesn't mean that many Republicans have done the same atrocities as the Democrats have done. All of us are accountable. All of us must give account for what we have done in the flesh. Therefore, wait for me, declares the Lord, for the day when I rise up to seize the prey. Wait for me. I've waited a long time. For my decision is to gather nations to assemble kingdoms, to pour out upon them my indignation, all my burning anger. For in the fire of my jealousy, all the earth shall be consumed. Babylon the Great rules the world, has ruled the world, because Trump has been systematically destroying Babylon the Great. And now we are seeing that battle that world war come out. We are seeing it. And then look, for at that time, at the time of judgment, at the time of judgment, see, this is the end time. The destruction of Babylon brings us into something new. At that time, I will change the speech of the peoples to a pure speech, that all of them may call upon the name of the Lord and serve him with one accord. So God, there is going to be a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It just didn't look like anybody taught. From beyond the rivers of Cush, my worshipers, the daughter of my dispersed ones, shall bring in my offering. On that day you shall not be put to shame, See, we've been put to shame. The Kodeshim, the holy ones, 
what the Bible calls the saints. I don't like that word because it's been so misused. But the Kodeshim, the holy ones of God, were always put to shame. They were the ones who were tortured and killed because they upheld righteousness. On that day you shall not be put to shame because of the deeds by which you have rebelled against me. So God is going to bring people to repentance. For then I will remove from your midst your proudly exultant ones, and you shall no longer be haughty in my holy mountain. But I will leave in your midst a people humble and lowly. They shall seek refuge in the name of the Lord, those who are left in Israel. They shall do no injustice and speak no lies, nor shall there be found in their mouth a deceitful tongue, for they shall graze and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. Remember, God put Babylon over us because we rebelled against him. Now, at this time, when Babylon is finally judged, the Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The king, <clears throat> excuse me, the king of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion. Let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in the midst of you, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast. That's us. We are lame. We are outcasts. We have no power. I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you in. At that time, when I gather you together, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the people of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for his word to us. Thank you, Lord. I want to share one other thing from Dana Coverstone's dreams, prophetic dreams. In his second to last video, there's a part in his dream where he sees Hillary Clinton standing, President Trump kneeling before her. She has his head back with a knife to cut his throat, ready to kill him, ready to decapitate him. And suddenly, Trump grabs a chain that's around her neck, pulls it down, breaks free. And then he runs to his vehicle that Dana calls the Beast. Well, that has been a name for the car that the President of the United States has, has used. But I find it interesting that he called it the Beast. He ran to the car called the Beast. On the way... There were three assassination attempts against him, all of which were unsuccessful. And then he got into the beast, and then there were guards all around him with muskets who appear to be the patriots who protect Donald Trump, who even now support Donald Trump, of whom I am one, even though he is the eighth head of the beast. I wanted to share this part from Dana's dreams because of this. In the late 90s, 97, 8, or 9, I had a dream 
where I was, it seemed like I was watching a movie in the dream. And suddenly the credits of the movie began to run and suddenly this fish, huge fish with the face of Hillary Clinton came to the forefront and then the title of the movie came, The Beast That Rises From the Sea. I believe that Hillary Clinton was the last head, the last face of the seventh head of the beast. The seventh beast, seventh head has ruled for many, many years. Probably 16 or 1700 years since the Holy Roman Empire took power from Rome. And it's had successive leaders. And Hillary Clinton is I believe, the last leader of the seventh head of the beast. She is poised to kill the eighth, who is Donald Trump. Donald Trump is the one that God has raised up as the eighth head of the beast. He is the prophetic fulfillment of Cyrus, who just so happens to appear in Isaiah chapter 48, which is right in that area of scripture that I was reading to you concerning the fulfillment of the destruction of Babylon the Great. But look at Isaiah 45. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed, I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hordes and secret places that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. This prophesies Donald Trump. In a previous video that I did in this series, I go through this very carefully and show you that even Israel, the nation of Israel today, minted coins that has Cyrus's head and Donald Trump's head on the same coin. So it's very telling that this prophetic dream by Dana Coverstone includes a picture of the seventh head trying to destroy the eighth head. The seventh head was the leader, or one of the leaders, one of the, one of the main leaders within Babylon the Great. She's trying to kill the eighth head who has been commissioned by God to destroy Babylon the Great, to destroy what she had been the head of. That's why for the last four years, you've seen nothing but nonstop war against Donald Trump, all kinds of calling for his assassination, every attempt to impeach him, every attempt to get rid of him. But what happens? He escapes every time. Evidently, there have been many assassination attempts against him, but he's escaped every one. And then he gets in a car called the Beast. Well... Why? Because he's the eighth head of the beast. And he escapes from the seventh head of the beast. Now, the great thing is this. God does all these things and shows all these things to Cyrus, that is Donald Trump, to subdue the nations, to subdue Babylon the Great, to destroy Babylon the Great, so that, and God gives him all the treasures of secret places, okay? Why? That you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. There is coming a day, and I think that day is soon, when Donald Trump will be profoundly saved, where the Spirit of God will come on him in power, upon him and the false prophet, upon many of those who are around him now, who basically believe in New Age theology, and are, are false prophets. They do not teach the truth about the one true God, about Jesus Christ. 
They believe that Jesus is just another ascended master, that he's like a Krishna or a Buddha, but he's not the same. There is only one name under heaven by which men may be saved. You don't ever, if a, if a demon comes at you, you don't ever say, I rebuke you in the name of Buddha. You don't ever say, I rebuke you in the name of Krishna. You don't ever say, I rebuke you in the name of Muhammad when you're against an evil spirit. You say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And in my own personal experience, I've seen the demons flee. So, God is doing this work. The word that Dana Coverstone had in every one of his four dreams to Christians was brace yourself, brace yourself, brace yourself. You can brace yourself by grabbing hold of what I'm teaching here because what we are seeing is the fulfillment of the Word of God. It's happening now. It's going to increase in speed and severity and we are going to see things that we thought we would never see. Yes, we're going to be inconvenienced. Yes, we're going to be unable to get things that we thought we always needed but we are going to be provided for. But we need to be braced in our spirits. We need to be braced in our hearts. We need to be secure in our faith. We need to be strong in our faith so that we can uphold ourselves and others who are going to need help in this time. This is it. This is the day of the Lord. This is the day of wrath. And very soon, in a single hour, we're going to see Babylon utterly destroyed.